welcome to the session and in this session let us discuss about the color models so now uh, when talking about 3d viewing in the previous sessions i told you that when you are going to have a 3d viewing operations so which is going to work on 3d objects and if i want to have a realistic objects so which will be close enough to this physical appearance of any object we should talk about projections and the projection apis and once we are going to talk about projection apis the next part is going to be the visible and not visible which we have already discussed in the previous session and next we should talk about the illumination model or we talk about the light source before we are going to talk about the illumination and the light source you should have some basic understanding of the color models with respect to open gel programming and so now we'll just understand how exactly the color models will be used in your program and how exactly it should bring into the discussion with the 3d viewing operations and so now when i talk about the color models the basic is the properties of the light because whatever the human eyes is see or it's visible it is going to be called as the visible radiation and the whatever the visible radiation we are going to have we call this as light and see if i want to talk about a properties of a light which is a radiant energy and this radiant energy will decide depending upon the electromagnetic spectrum fine and as you are already aware of the different types of waves or different radio of radiations starting from gamma rays the radio waves there is a part of waves in the wavelength so which we call this as visible light or the visible part as whatever the visible light we are going to have this is going to tell us what type of color we are going to have that is what we talk about electromagnetic spectrum whenever we going to talk about the color and the radiant energy and whatever the wavelength we are going to have so either we can establish the visible part in form of wavelength or in the form of frequency as we talk about the light or the color we should talk about this particular frequency though we are not going to drag this directly into the open gel program but we need to have some sort of an abstracted basic of what the property of light is going to be and so now with this the first property as i have just told you in electromagnetic radiations wavelength we are going to have it as frequency or the wavelength so where our eyes respond to the color which is going to be the dominant frequency out of this whichever the frequency is going to dominate in this wavelength in the visible wavelength whichever the frequency is going to dominate we call this as dominant frequency and that dominant frequency will be observed by our human eyes and that particular color will be visible on an any sort of object and this is the main property of your color what we are going to pursue other than this we are going to have two other basic sensations of the color characters or the color property and, uh, and in those first one is going to be the brightness or we call this as luminance the total light energy or whatever the dominant frequency we are going to am what is the intensity of the frequency that is where we going to talk about brightness so we are going to have we are just going to have a low brightness or we are going to have high brightness so depending upon what energy the dominant frequency is going to emit that is going to tell us what is the brightness or luminous is going to be other other property is going to be the purity or saturation that is if i going to talk about any color any dominant frequency if it is going to have 100% frequency we call this as 100% saturation or 100% purity and if anything if dominant frequency itself gets its wavelength to be minimized or to be reduced we call this as 50% or 25% depends upon how many percentage of the strength you are going to reduce as we call this as saturation or we going to call this as purity right so the few properties of the color 
and we talk about again the characteristics of the color one more important property what we can bring in other than the three properties three main one more property what we can bring in by adding the first property the frequency and the third property the purity we can something called as chromaticity and which is going to be u saturation now this is going to be the chromatic color where we are going to use different types of frequency to arrive at the white color or different types of colors what we are going to have so we are sometimes in the graphics design we talk about chromatic color and sometimes we talk about true color hence if you're talking about a chromatic color we talk about u saturation is not 100% saturation but we're going to call this as u saturation so different types of characters what the color is going to have I mean talk about the energy distribution that is what we say dominant frequency so when does the color we are going to pursue when there is a dominant frequency and so right now this is the frequency of the visible light so starting from violet to red or red to violet this is going to be the frequency this is going to tell me what are the different colors we are going to have if I have this as the frequency and I, I should be able to perceive all the colors at a time but hence in this case there's no any dominant frequency but right now there is a one dominant frequency which is going to tell me what type of color i am going to have hence we call this as dominant frequency depending upon this dominance we will tell what object the color is going to hold right now hence now whatever the frequency we are going to have at this level we call this as white color. If all the color is going to dominant, if all the frequency is going to dominate, we are going to have white color. If none of the frequency dominates and sits at the zero level, we call this as black color. Hence, so keeping the reference as the white, we should talk about the dominance. Hence, we are going to have this as the energy at the white level, and energy at the dominant frequency when I subtract the dominance energy with the white energy we are going to get the difference and this difference will tell what type of color we are going to perceive into hence we should talk about energy distribution and talk about color model hence the color behavior which within some particular context we are going to have different types of models now we know what is color but the same color when we talk in the computer graphics programming we can talk about different models hence we are going to have different types of color models in your computer graphics programming hence this different model is going to appear depending upon the color behavior within some particular context of every color hence so different models will help to describe different color characteristics Hence, we are going to have a primary color and we are going to have intuitive color. And so now if I talk about primary color, whatever the RGB color or CMY color we are going to use. So we are going to talk about that as a primary color. So right now, now this three, we can call this as a primary color as blue, pink and yellow or we are going to have RGB as a primary color. So whichever the color you are going to choose as a contributor, the main contributor, which will give or produce me different types of color, we are going to call this as primary color. We can make any color as a prime color by just having a frequency, the dominant frequency of three colors. Or if you want two colors, if you want four colors, it depends upon how we are going to use the frequency or energy distribution. Right now, by default, most of the system will work with the RGB as the primary color. And even there are some system which will work at the different, different types of primary colors. But at the default, we talk about the RGB. And if I'm going to talk about initiative color, so in this case, there is no any primary color. All the colors will be used as a primary color. But depending upon the parameters of who, or depending upon the parameter of saturation, depending upon the parameter of what value I'm going to use. Now, these three properties of the color will tell me what is the color. Uh, right now, I'm going to 
observe and this is going to be the intuitive color and see if it is a primary color pick any set of color to define the particular color and if it's an initiative color so pick or use the portion of this parameters adjust the values of these three parameters to have initiative colors and so the two different colors what i'm going to have using these two different types of properties i can bring in the first color model in your open gel program what we call this as rgb color model and this rgb color model we know that our human eye is going to work on testimonial theory of vision even our human eye is going to work on this three primary color called as rgb fine and so that is what we call as tri tri stands for three and there is a stimulus the three stimulus in our eyes which is going to react and perceive what type of color it is right now it's going to observe and so you can just have a look at what is this theory vision of trait stimul is going to be you can just browse it and you can fetch more information on that but your open gel program is going to work on the same theory of human vision and we is going to set up an rgb color model and when there is say three colors we can talk about the three axes the x axis the y axis and the z axis and when i use three axis we can have a cube as a volume so which will give me the color volume now so depending upon this now whatever the point you are going to pick inside this cube will tell me what is the color i am going to perceive now and so this is what we are going to call this as the color cube the rgb color model is going to work on the color cube and in this color cube if i am going to have x y and z axis as red green and blue and this point if all is going to be zero i'm going to be at the origin which is going to be black if all the three is going to be one that is going to be the maximum value which is going to be white and anything in between this diagonal line if i vary the value this is going to be the gray scale or the gray scale or the gray intensity color and we are going to have this if i want only the blue color i am going to give 001 if i want a red i am going to give 100 if i want a green i am going to give 010 and this is going to be the x axis this is the y axis and this is the z axis right now for me for this particular rgb color model and with this i am just going to have any chromatic color if i want to find if i want to find a chromatic color using the chromatic model in the rgb color model i am just going to use the components of r i am going to use the r component multiply this with the red vector and the green component multiply with the green vector blue component multiply with the blue vector and the result of this addition of this operation will give me the chromatic wavelength color what should be picked right now to observe or should to perceive and that is what the c value in the chromatic color or the fourth property what i discussed with the color property is going to be and with this color model we are going to have an rgb color model as i told you the pre the three dominant color areas the red i am going to have red Uh, sorry sorry just just look at this so this, this is going to be the rgb fine i am just going to have red as the dominant color and the green as dominant color and the blue as the dominant color and so i am going to have rgb as the three dominant color but now if i am going to reverse this if i am going to reverse this now i am going to have yellow as a dominant color cyan as a dominant color and magenta as a dominant color and this is where we call this as cmy color model i have a rgb color model and now i am going to have cmy color model by just changing the primary colors what i am going to consider and so now with this now this is going to be the x axis the c or the cyan is going to be the x axis and the magenta is going to be the y axis and yellow is going to be the z axis for me and if you just observe if all the values are zero it is going to be white but in this case it was black 
and the diagonally opposite point is going to be black whereas in this case it was going to be white this way we call this as cmy color model and rgb color model and so now using rgb color model if i want to have cym i am going to have the mixture of these two colors i am going to have blue and violet and i am going to have red and green i am going to have blue and red so which is going to give me this three colors and using cmy if i want to get the other three colors i am going to have cy plus c will give me green c plus m will give me blue y plus m it is going to give me red color so this is how we are going to use cmy to obtain different types of colors and when i talk about cmy color there is one more variation in the cmy color model which we call this as cmyk we are going to have this as cmyk and this you know what is c you know what is m you know what is y and now k stands for black is going to be cmyk color model hence we are going to have rgb color model and now we are going to have cmy color model or cmyk color model where even we are going to consider this as one more primary color as the black color hence we are going to use rgb color model as a additive colors the cmy or cmyk we call this as subtractive color whenever you are going to have a additive color model it is going to be rgb and when you are going to talk about a subtractive color model it is going to be cmyk and this is going to be all the colors going to be vibrant tones and this is going to be cool tones so used by monitors for display whatever display we are going to have used with the rgb color model and this is mostly used with the printing press or the print media or the digital print what we are going to have this is going to work in three channels or three major colors rgb and this is going to work in four channels or four primary colors the four primary frequencies that is cyan magenta yellow and the black so now usually this is going to be of smaller file size and this is going to be larger compared to rgb but easier to color treat so when i want to print it's going to be the easier color for the printing operations this is where we are going to have cmyk color model and now whenever going to have a one color model if i want to shift or if i want to change the values of to an another color model we can call this as transformation between cmy and rgb i can change this transformation from rgb to cmy or cmy to rgb if i want to do this i just need to have a vector subtraction so 1 minus r will give me c 1 minus g will give me m 1 minus b is going to give me y similarly from cmy i can get what is rgb is going to be and this is an easier operation if i am going to talk about cmy and rgb but now if i want to have a transformation from cmyk and rgb in that case i am going to have fourth component but in this formula there is no fourth component i am going to have only three three components now if i want to convert from rgb to cmyk first you need to find the k value the k value is going to be the maximum of rgb using the maximum of rgb i am going to subtract each cmy first i am going to subtract c equals 1 minus r m equals 1 minus g y equals 1 minus b as usual what i was doing so once this values has been worked out now c should be subtract with k which is maximum of rgb subtract m with k subtract y with k this is going to convert from rgb to cmyk similarly if i want to convert from cmyk to rgb i am going to find the minimum of rgb now i am going to find the minimum of rgb and i am going to subtract r with k g with k and b is going to subtract r with k now this is what we are going to have the color models with respect to open gl graphics though it's not a complete information of color models but this is what you should know at the basic abstract level so that we can use this when we talk about illumination model in the next session thank you